Hi everyone, how are you doing? I woke up kind of early this morning, so I've just been reading and drinking some tea. Uh, and uh, this past week, it's been very rainy here in London. Uh, but today, it is beautifully nice and clear and sunny outside um, and not too cold. So, uh, so I'm hoping to go for a bit of a walk before I have to go in to, to work soon. Uh, but first, I wanted to uh, do a book haul because I have a lot of new books um, that I got recently that I want to talk about, uh, many of which uh, publishers kindly sent me and have just been published uh, this month in January, so I want to talk about all of those. Um, but first, I have a couple of books um, that I was given for, um, for Christmas I want to show off. Um, so I was given Susan Choi's novel Trust Exercise, uh, which won the, the National Book Award last year and which I've been really eager to read, but I just hadn't got a copy of yet, so I was really glad uh, that I was given this uh, for, for Christmas. And then also um, I was given by my lovely friend Christy uh, in Maine. Um, she sent me uh, the novel Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. And I just love the, the cover of this novel. Um, it's, it's so great, isn't it? Um, it's about um, someone who uh, takes charge of her friends an old friend of hers, um, children, um, and she's told before she takes charge of these children uh, that if the children get too agitated, they will spontaneously combust. Um, so that's why the, the cover of the novel is like this. And I know this is quite a controversial thing, um, but this, um, this has deckled edges. Don't know if you can see. Um, and I quite like deckled edges. I know, I know this is a really a geeky reader thing, uh, but to have a big controversy, controversy uh, about but um, but I, I yeah I just feel like it makes it seem like the the book was just sort of ripped from the trunk of a tree and uh, so I like the sort of rough edges of it um, opposed to the uh, you know smooth edges of a novel I mean I like that too but um, but yeah so so that's where I fall in the whole deckled edges uh, big debate I know it's the big controversy of our times <laughs> um, but uh, I was also sent recently on um, these two beautiful new uh, editions, paperback editions of Hilary Mantel's novel, the first two books in her trilogy, and aren't they they really gorgeous? Um, so Fourth Estate very kindly sent me these um, because the third book is going to be published in March, and uh, as I've talked about recently, I haven't actually read these books yet, but sort of to gear myself up for them, I read a biography of Thomas Cromwell recently, um, which was a bit of a slog to, to get through, but I am really eager to, to read them now, especially um, now that I have these beautiful new editions. So, I'm, uh, I'm very excited to get to these soon before the third book comes out. Um, then, yeah, then I have a whole group of books um, which have just been published in uh, January for the very first time. Um, the first is a book of short stories called Diary of a Murderer by Kim Yon Ha. And, uh, and this is actually four short stories. They're fairly long short stories. Um, the first one is almost 100 pages long, um, the title story, Diary of a Murderer. And it, it mainly takes, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, I guess you could call it a novella, um, but it's, um, so that, that story is about a um, man who has made murder into an art form um, throughout his life, but he's losing his memory and he, he wants to commit one final murder. It's supposed to be a very sort of darkly comic um, story. And I, I think uh, a lot of the stories in this are meant to be sort of darkly comic and, um, and virgin to the erotic as well. So um, yeah, very curious to, to try this. Then I have two new novels, um, which are both about sisterhood, um, but from very different perspectives. So I have Lawn Bright River by Liz Moore. And I, I haven't read her novel, The Unseen World, which I know is hugely popular and has been sitting on my shelf for ages, but it's quite a long book as this is quite a, a long book as well, so I just haven't got around to, to reading it yet. So this is set in Philadelphia and is about two sisters who were very close when they were younger, but they've grown very far apart in their adult years because one sister has become a drug addict 
addict um, and uh, has gone missing and the other sister has joined the police force and um, and so it's the story of her going on a hunt to find out what happened to her sister and um, and it's based on I think the the author's own experience working with drug addicts in the the city of Philadelphia so um, so yeah I'm very curious to to read this and then the other um, novel about sisterhood is a pure heart by Raja Hasib and uh, this novel set in um, well in Egypt where there are two sisters two Muslim sisters and one of them moves to New York City and starts life for herself there and then the other st sister stays in Cairo and um, remains a very devout Muslim and um, and but uh, something happens to her and the the um, the sister who went to New York goes back to Egypt to try to discover what happened to her so it's it's uh, both um, I think it's sort of interesting that they're both sort of tales about sisterhood um, and sisters trying to track down their, their lost sister. Liar by Ailet Gunder Goshen. This is a, a writer who is based in Israel and the novel concerns a teenage girl who works behind an ice cream counter and feels like her life is very dull and monotonous um, until one day a former celebrity comes into the, the ice cream parlor and there's a exchange between them and the um, the celebrity is accused of um, sexual misconduct and um, and the, um, the the teenage girl gets in the center of, of this story and gets swept up in this media storm so it's um it's sort of uh, vaguely sort of about the the me too movement and the complications of, of sexual politics then I have two novels which I keep hearing good things about and uh, and lots of people have been talking about them recently um, so the first is your house will pay um, by Steph Cha and this novel um, about two families in Los Angeles uh, who don't appear to have anything much to do with each other but have this sort of secret history and connection to each other which unravels over over the the course of the novel um, so yeah very curious about that and then American Dirt by Janine Cummins um, and I actually heard the author um, talk at a literary salon several months ago um, who read from this novel and then was talking about it in conversation and uh, and it sounded really interesting and good so it's about a mother who owns a bookstore and her her child and um, and it's about sort of the the modern immigrant experience in America and yeah just lots of people keep talking about this novel and uh, so yeah I hope to read it very soon. The Unpassing by Chia Chia Lin uh, this was published a while ago in America I think um, but it's only just been published in the UK by Virago Books and I I've been so eager to, to read this novel because it's one of those ones that's published in the States and I keep hearing great things about it and it has um, big fans in the, the author's Garth Greenwell um, who wrote um, a blurb for it as well as uh, Yag Yasi and uh, so this is about a Taiwanese family um, who moves to Alaska and sets up a life for themselves there um, but then uh, they're sort of plagued by um, Ill illness. Um, a couple of the children are plagued by illness and that creates a lot of complications and grief in the family. And uh, so yeah, it follows their, their story. And uh, I just think it's such a, a beautiful cover and it's nice how the inside of the novel um, sort of continues on with this, this pattern um, on the, the cover, which sort of looks like waves and water. Of Cats and Elfins by Sylvia Townsend Warner. Um, this is a book of short stories of fantasy short stories which has only just been collected for the very first time. Sylvia Townsend Warner was a, a writer of the um, early 20th century and uh, and she it's interesting because she she wrote um, fantasy novels as well as historical novels so I've only read uh, one of her historical novels um, called Summer Will Show um, which I thought was really interesting and good I mean I didn't wholly love it but um, it was really interesting and a really strange new perspective and um, and so I'm, I'm very curious about what her 
fantasy stories are actually like and she has a big fan in uh, Neil Gaiman um, who really attributes her as like one of the really great early fantasy um, short story writers and uh, so yeah I'll be really interested to, to dip into some of these and this has been published by Handheld Press um, which pub is a, a publishes these really beautiful editions of classic novels and 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 books of fiction, um, a lot of which have sort of gone out of print or, or haven't um, been around for, for a while. So um, I think it's really quite lovely, the, the cover of it. Pine by Francine Toon. Uh, this is a novel about uh, life in the highlands um, up in, in Scotland and sort of remote small town life and concerns a father and a daughter um, who, who live in sort of this isolated way and and find that there are a number of local mysteries of things which aren't talked about and aren't understood and um, and so it's sort of the the daughter goes on a quest to sort of uncover some of these mysteries and it's meant to be quite suspenseful as well as sort of gothic and uh, yeah and this is another novel I keep hearing really great things about so I'm very eager to read. Little Bandaged Days by Kira Wilder. Um, this is a novel about a family that moves to Geneva um, where the, the husband gets a job there um, which keeps him very busy and he's away a lot of the time um, so the mother is left alone with her children and goes slightly stir crazy because she's just sort of all on her own. So it's about the, the troubles of motherhood when um, all the birds burden of parenting is placed upon one parent. Lo by Jeet Thayel. Um, this is a novel about a man whose wife has recently died and sort of to get over the pain of this loss he moves to Bombay and tries a new drug and gets lost in this chaotic underworld of the, the city. And this is an author I've been meaning to read for, for quite a while. I think uh, Joyce Carol Oates is, is a fan of this author and has blurbed him um, before. Um, but he, he also has fans in, in Edna O'Brien um, and John Burnside. So I'm curious to read him for the first time. The Island Child by Molly Aitken. Um, this is about a remote island uh, where, where people are raised in uh, extreme isolation and the only book they have to read is the Bible. And it's about a girl who leaves that island um, to find out what the, the larger world holds for her. So I'm very intrigued by that, that storyline. Um, it seems like a, a great novel for me. And finally, I have a slim, newly translated novel called Untold Night and Day by Bei Su that has this really beautiful cover. And the story is about two people in Seoul in South Korea um, who have a mutual friend that has disappeared. So it's about their connection with each other. And it's translated by Deborah Smith. Um, who is also translated Han Khan. Um, so I'm very excited to, to read this um, new slim novel. Uh, so those are all the books I want to talk about. Um, so let me know um, which of these you're most interested in, um, which you think I should read first and all that good stuff. So hope you're doing well and have a good weekend and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye everyone.